Hi everybody, uh, it's Tom here. I'm sorry this is a little late. I was really sidetracked with work. I'm finally here, um, ready to give my research report. Um, so the movie I chose for this sound design project was The Matrix. Um, movie was made in 1999 by the Wachowski brothers, and it's it's a very big mo movie that a lot of people know about, especially in the sci-fi community. Um, it set a whole new bar for movies with special effects, editing, and sound effects. It won four Academy Awards, even, for best sound effects and design, sound editing, and it's declared one of the best science fiction films of all time. And, like, many movies and other forms of media, like video games and, uh, like, commercials have paid tribute to this movie. Um, you know, Red Pill or the Blue Pill, the slow motion effects. Um, so it's a, it's a big film that... Um, has a lot behind it and I haven't really seen this movie until now I've heard reviews of it and I've seen clips of it and I've seen many um, you know references that they've made to it but I've never really seen the movie until now so so I was really excited to finally check this movie out and see what all the fuss was about as well as kind of see how the sound editing kind of played into this big movie so let's see what we got here so, the film begins with a computer programmer named Thomas Anderson. I thought it was cool that the main character was named Tom, too. Um, but he goes under the name Neo as a computer hacker and kind of in the computer world, who keeps coming across the cryptic phrase of the Matrix and is trying to track down a man named Morpheus. And he has this feeling that the world he lives that something's just wrong in the world he lives in, but he doesn't really know what. Um, but after meeting with a woman named Trinity, who hints that Morpheus actually wants to meet him as well, but that um, a group is looking for him as well, like that he's in danger. He he is kind of on edge even more. Um, so he receives a call from Morpheus the next day when he goes to work, but the agents also show up there too and they capture him and they show that they have some other worldly power over everything. Like they actually force his mouth shut, like it, his skin, like, sews over his mouth and he can't say anything and they show that they have this power and that they're looking for morpheus because they kind of believe him as a giant terrorist like the greatest terrorist in danger to the world so they insert a tracker into his body and they make it seem like a dream like immediately after it enters he wakes up in his bed and he's like was it a dream he's not sure and it's probably like parts like that that really make him question the world but he suddenly gets call, a call from Trinity and Morpheus himself, and they tell him to meet him at a place, I think under a bridge, and they they get him and they get him in a truck, in a car, and they remove the tracker from him, and they take him to see Morpheus. And when he finally does meet Morpheus, Morpheus tells him, you know, you're kind of right, this isn't really a great world like this isn't really re really the world you're living in so he gives him the option of staying in the fantasy or seeing the real world you know the red pill or the blue pill so wanting to learn the truth he chooses the red pill and with a really cool scene he reality melts around him and he wakes up in a pod with cables attached to his body like on his all over his torso his arms and even the back of his head and he looks around and he sees like there are pods everywhere. The world is a desolate wasteland and electricity and machines are everywhere. Um, after being rescued by Morpheus and his crew and he recuperates after like learning to his bot how to use his body because he has technically never used it his whole life, um, he learns that in the 21st century humanity created artificial intelligence which eventually bred multiple races of robots and machines and the two clashed and war broke out and the machines ran on a solar power and so the humans created a storm that blocked the sun like forever so thinking that if they blocked the sun it would drain the robots energies the energy but the robots then retaliated by destroying the human cities and harvesting human body the human body like with the human body's heat and bioelectric power that basically subbed as their version of solar power that they needed to survive and the matrix is a large simulation of the end of the 20th century basically the peak of human civilization according to them 
where to keep the humans pacified while the machines harvest their bodies and and use their energy and the agents that are in the matrix are powerful computer programs that are set to protect them protect the matrix and all that and the fur and so humanity actually isn't born anymore they're grown like on large plants and they're all hooked up into the matrix that way um, but the first human that was ever freed from the matrix was able to like see the coding and everything and he was able to bend the matrix to his will and then he broke out and he started the revolution of the human people that eventually became Zion, the final city where humanity that escaped the Matrix is living. But after he died, an oracle claimed he would be reborn, and Morpheus believes Neo is that one that is, is him reborn and will and is prophesied to free the humans and end this war between them. So, so that's basically the film. I won't go into too much so to avoid spoilers, but... I'm sure you've probably heard about this film a little bit. <laughs> um, so the film was directed by the Wachowski brothers, who were well known for their style and craft from the f from their first directing role in 1996 from the movie Bound. And after the success of The Matrix in 1999, um, two more sequels followed, like me, like relatively soon after in 2003 with Matrix Reloaded and the Ma and the Matrix Revolutions in 2003. Uh, Reloaded was received well, but, you know, not to the same extent as the original. It was, it was good, but it wasn't as great. But Revolutions was mixed. Some people thought it was alright, other people were like, uh, this isn't, this is really how we're gonna end it. But, that's what they got. Um, afterwards, they were, they directed an adaptation of Alan Moore's graphic novel, V for Vendetta, in 2005. And were hired again, in 2006, for them to revamp the movie The Invasion for the Warner Brothers after it wasn't really meeting expectations. Um, the Invasion was received relatively well, and V for Vendetta was also another successful movie for, for the brothers. But after trying to help with an anime-style film in 2008 called Speed Racer, because they took many of, their, um, many of their art designs from anime and Japanese films back in the 1960s when they were young, it just started a long chain of events of just sad disappointments with movies with Speed Racer, um, Ninja Assassin in 2009, and Jupiter Ascending in 2015. So the Wachowski brothers, while they are well known for their great story and m huge revolutionizing film uh, design and all that, um, unfortunately they haven't really made anything great recently. Though they are still declared one of the best movie makers of all time with The Matrix. Uh, the chief sound editor and designer for the film was Dane A. Davis, who worked on, in well over 150 movies, but mostly the ones that were with the Wachowski brothers that I mentioned before, and um, a 2000 film, 2012 film called uh, Cloud Atlas. Um, and afterwards, he actually became pr the president of his own sound studios called Dane Track Studios, so he's still riding high with his success with The Matrix.